Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the Chinese economy and specifically to talk about artificial intelligence or AI. Now, the world of business loves the next big thing and AI has been on the top of that list for at least the last 18 months. Any company that can prove that it's incorporating AI into its business and developing things at a fast rate has seen its share price go through the roof. And AI applications are being laid out in every single industry that you can think about. So it's really where the business world wants to be. And unfortunately, from China's point of view, Huawei, which is its leading tech company, isn't at the cutting edge of AI technology. It is developing chips that are trying to compete with some of the big producers around the world, but they're not there yet. So as a result of that, China is still needing to import the latest AI chips from places like the USA and Europe. And unfortunately, lots of sanctions have been applied against China, preventing them from getting hold of these AI chips as a result of the fact that the USA believes that China is using this technology to develop its military capabilities. So in today's video, we'll talk about AI. We'll have a look at what artificial intelligence actually means, what it is and what the products are that are being produced. We'll then talk about who the main companies in the world that are producing the leading AI microchips are and why this is a problem from China's point of view. We'll then have a look at the sanctions that have recently been ramped up by the USA, preventing China getting access to the latest AI chips. We'll talk about the problems that are now manifesting themselves in the Chinese economy because Chinese businesses are now suffering as a result of these shortages. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think the implications of the shortage of AI technology in China are on the Chinese economy right now and what the implications will be over the course of the next 6 to 12 months. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that's supporting the channel. If you've bought me a coffee, sent me a YouTube super thanks, or signed up as a patron or a member, you're really helping to support the channel, so thank you so much. Artificial intelligence has become really big news over the last few years. Most people's first interaction with AI was through the Siri app on the Apple phones, where you could ask the phone to actually answer questions for you, or through the Alexa app that was through Google, where you can ask it to do things like play music or switch your lights on or answer questions. Alexa, how tall is Mount Everest? Mount Everest's height is 29,029 feet, 8,848 meters. But I think the highest profile development of artificial intelligence in recent times was the introduction of an app by a company in the USA called OpenAI called ChatGPT. And ChatGPT enabled you to ask questions and receive really detailed answers in a matter of seconds. And this became a dream for students all around the world because they could get their essays written without actually doing any work. But artificial intelligence isn't just for fun. It isn't there just to provide entertainment for everybody. It's actually a cutting edge technology that can provide fantastic results in a variety of different industries. In fact, every single thing that you can think of can probably be improved by using AI. And in terms of categorizing AI, there are four different types. Reactive AI, which is the most basic form of artificial intelligence, uses algorithms to optimize outputs based on a set of inputs. And a good example of this basic form of AI is a machine that can play chess that has reactive systems that optimize the best strategy to win the game against each player. Now, reactive AI tends to be fairly static and is unable to learn or adapt to novel situations. And as a result, it will produce the same output given identical inputs. The next level is limited memory AI, which can adapt to past experiences or updates itself based on new observations or data. And a good example of this form of AI is a self-driving vehicle, which can read the road or adapt to novel situations and potentially learn from past experience. The third level of artificial intelligence, which is the most advanced that we have at the moment, is fully adaptive AI that has extensive ability to learn and retain past experiences. Examples of this type of AI are advanced chatbots that can pass things like tests and fool people into believing that the AI is actually a human being answering those questions. 
The fourth and most advanced version of artificial intelligence is self-aware AI. And under this concept, in theory, the technology becomes aware of its own existence. Now, at the moment, this does not exist and is purely science fiction, the sort of thing that you see in movies. But there is, in theory, a potential for the intelligence to achieve this level. The main problem from China's perspective is that the companies that are at the cutting edge of producing artificial intelligence microchips are based in the USA and Europe. And China now has a limited amount of access to both these microchips for use in their technology, but also the machines that are producing these microchips. Because in the past, China has been able to get hold of machinery and then copy that machinery to produce its own versions. And that's where the problem lies from China's perspective today. The companies that are currently producing the world's leading microchips are NVIDIA and AMD, both of which are based in the USA, ASML based in the Netherlands, and ARM based in the UK. Now, in addition to these companies, a lot of the other big technology companies, such as IBM, Alphabet, and Apple, are also producing their own chips. And in China, Huawei, which is the leading technology company, has been rapidly improving its own capabilities and can produce very fast microchips, but not at the level that some of these other world-leading companies are producing. And what this is causing is a setback for Chinese companies, because in order to develop world-leading products and be able to compete with all of your competitors, you need to have the latest technology so that it can do everything that consumers want. Because as soon as one of your competitors is using these AI chips, they can do things that you can't and you're put at a competitive disadvantage. So that's the last thing that China wants right now. But unfortunately, that's where it is. And as the USA has increased its sanctions over the last six months or so, China has seen itself being left behind in the world of AI development. Over the past 18 months, the economic relationship between the USA and China has deteriorated as the two countries have clashed on a number of different issues. And Joe Biden has identified a number of leading Chinese companies as being potentially involved in the Chinese military efforts. Now, the vast majority of these companies are claiming that they don't have any involvement with what's going on with the military in China, that they are just technology companies that are there to develop their economy economic potential. But unfortunately, from their point of view, they've been added to a growing list of companies that can no longer access USA or European AI technology. This is the current list of Chinese technology companies that are banned from buying any AI technology directly from the USA and the majority of Europe. And as you can see on this list, Huawei which is China's biggest technology company, is included. And if you're not familiar with the Huawei brand, it became really big news all around the globe in 2020. It was one of the first companies to develop 5G technology. So the mobile phone technology to give you a quicker operating system to be able to download things and look at things on the internet much faster. So that sounds like a great idea. And Huawei started selling equipment all across the globe. They were selling it into the USA, the UK, Australia. But all of a sudden, somebody became concerned that the data that was being passed through these systems could actually be intercepted and used by China for spying and security purposes. And as a direct result of those concerns, countries such as the USA, the UK and Australia implemented an outright ban on the use of all Huawei equipment. And in some situations, they would actually paid and installed this equipment and then had to have it removed. So this was a major news item at the time. And Huawei remains a banned product in many countries around the world for those same reasons. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Huawei have been rapidly trying to improve their own capabilities. They're trying to develop their own artificial intelligence microchips. But this isn't the sort of thing that you can do overnight. 
technology takes time to develop and it's not something that you can just build from scratch. You need to build on all of the previous developments that have happened over the last 50 years. So Huawei are rapidly trying to copy what's happening elsewhere around the world. But as a result of the ban on not just the export of the chips themselves, but also all of the equipment, the USA have said they do not want any of that equipment landing in China so that it can be dismantled and potentially copied. It's causing a problem, not just for Huawei, but also for China. So let's have a look at some of the industries that are now being impacted by the shortage of AI equipment. If you follow the channel, you'll know that China is at the cutting edge of electric vehicle production. And it's actually one of the biggest car manufacturers in Russia right now. I recently posted a video talking about the decline of the Russian car industry and the fact that China have stepped in, taken over a lot of the facilities that were exited by multinational companies following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And the Chinese are now producing vehicles both in Russia and also exporting large amounts into Russia. But over the rest of the world, they're also exporting large amounts of electric vehicles. But some of those companies are now encountering problems because they can't get hold of AI chips. Two of China's premium electric vehicle brands, Chang'an and Cherry, have both had to delay deliveries of their flagship models due to production issues with a computing unit made by Huawei. The computing unit, called the MDC-810, powers advanced driver assistance systems and is central to Huawei's ambitions to become the dominant supplier of software and components for smart electric vehicles. The production issue relates to a shortage of a component that goes into the MDC A10, and the problems come at a time when Huawei is seeking to secure more investors for its four-year-old intelligent automotive solution business that it plans to spin off. The MDC A10 allows the car manufacturers to offer so-called intelligent driving features that include autonomous driving on highways and helping drivers navigate traffic jams similar to what Tesla's autopilot provides in North America. And it's reported that features such as these have become a major selling point and are a key reason why manufacturers have sought to partner with Huawei rather than overseas chip companies. In addition to the problems with the electric vehicle manufacturers, Huawei is also having problems itself. Huawei is one of the biggest producers of mobile phones in China. In fact, Apple recently announced a profits warning as a result of the fact that Chinese consumers have dropped the Apple brand and are moving towards Huawei products. However, Huawei is now having major problems in terms of its capacity. Soaring appetite for Huawei's artificial intelligence chips coupled with manufacturing constraints, has forced the Chinese tech giant to prioritize AI and slow production for its premium Mate 60 phones. Huawei uses one facility producing both AI chips and the Kirin chips that power its rival to Apple's iPhone. But a global race for AI functionality has left Huawei second placing its handsets just as the firm tops Chinese smartphone sales for the first time in more than three years. The situation offers a rare glimpse into Huawei's challenges as it works to rebuild since US sanctions in 2019 cut access to advanced chip making tools on national security grounds and crippled its smartphone unit. It also illustrates the impact of US restrictions on sales of AI processing chips to China, a market that was 90% controlled by US giant Nvidia before the latest curbs pushed Chinese customers to domestic alternatives. Huawei has been low key on its chip manufacturing capability and ambitions, and there is little public information on its progress or how it has managed to produce advanced chips. Its advancements became apparent after it surprised market watchers with an unflagged August launch of the Mate 60 mobile phone series. Dismantlement of the phones undertaken online found that the phones possessed a Chinese-made chip capable of fifth-generation telecommunication speeds. Analysts said Huawei may have been able to achieve this together with know-how from China's largest contract chip maker, SMIC, by tweaking deep ultraviolet lithography machines. Such a process is more laborious, expensive and likely less productive than using the more advanced extreme ultraviolet machines that the United States has prevented third-party countries from selling to China. Mate 60 handsets have been consistently out of stock, with would-be buyers complaining online of month-long waiting times for pre-orders to be fulfilled. 
So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because we've been talking a lot about what's happening in China over the last few weeks. We've got problems in the stock market. It's down to a five year low as a result of the fact that there is a complete loss of confidence amongst Chinese consumers. Overseas investment into the stock market has reduced dramatically over the last 12 months or so as foreign investors become concerned about what's happening in China and what the outlook is for 2024 and beyond. But Chinese investors are now also looking to exit from Chinese stocks. And I recently reported on the fact that a fund that invests only into US companies was trading at 50% above its net asset value, which is insane because you are guaranteed to lose money at that level. But it gives us an indication as to the mindset of Chinese consumers. They are worried about what's happening in China right now. And obviously the other factor that we've talked about at length is that the property sector makes up 25% of the Chinese economy and that sector is on its knees at the moment. It is struggling and there is no end in sight. There are some initiatives being put forward by the Chinese authorities that I talked about in a recent video. However, it's unlikely that they will change the fundamental dynamics. The issue at the moment is that consumers in China have lost all confidence in property and property developers and the property developers have somewhere in the region of 20 million apartments that have been prepaid in advance that need to be constructed. So China needs to come up with around half a trillion dollars of investment just to build out those apartments. So those two issues tell us that the Chinese economy is in big trouble. But in today's video, what I wanted to talk about is the future. What's happening in six to 12 to 18 months time. And as we talked about right at the start of today's video, artificial intelligence at the moment seems to be the way forward for virtually every single industry in the world. We talked about some fun examples like Siri and Alexa and ChatGPT, but in terms of practical and profitable applications, we're already seeing AI making big strides in the world of finance. It's able to rapidly identify and check things like fraud and money laundering, and it's also having major developments in the world of healthcare, where you can check records, diagnostics and come up with new ways of identifying disease and treatments for patients much much faster than you can with old-fashioned records and individuals and this is just scratching the surface I'm sure that over the next five years there will be a huge explosion in the number of applications for artificial intelligence and the key issue from China's point of view is that they now have restricted access to what's happening at the cutting edge of this technology. All of the firms that have developed the latest AI microchips are based outside of China. Huawei is desperately trying to copy what's happening, but Joe Biden and the sanctions that are being applied against China are restricting access to both the chips themselves and also the machinery that's producing it. So this is making it very difficult for Huawei to simply be able to copy, but also the technology itself is also a restrictive issue because copying this form of advanced technology is not quite as easy as it is to reproduce a washing machine back in the 70s and the 80s. This is very difficult to achieve. So it's likely that over the next 12 to 18 months, China's access to this AI technology will continue to be restricted. And that's going to have a major knock on impact to a lot of the companies in China. We talked about an example in today's video of the electric vehicle manufacturers struggling to be able to copy the technology that Tesla are using in terms of all of the driverless features on their cars. And it's those practical applications that are often the selling point. In the future, people may decide that they want to buy a certain vehicle because it can do things that other vehicles can't. And it's unlikely if China doesn't have access to artificial technology that they'll be able to compete in terms of all of those features. And this isn't just applied to cars. Obviously, this is every single product in the world. So if China does find that it can't access and can't develop its own AI technology, then that means that it will start to fall behind in terms of high-end products, high-value products, and technology products. And obviously, they are some of the fastest growing areas out of everything in the world. So this could be another major setback for China 
at a time when it's already struggling with its stock markets and its property sector. So when you add that on top of the existing problems in China, this could make it even more difficult for China to achieve its 5% growth target in 2024 and beyond that. And I think the key issue here really is that China needs to find a way of agreeing with the USA to reduce those sanctions. But as it sits right now, the relationship between the USA and China isn't in a good place and has actually been getting worse over the last 12 months or so. So it'll be interesting to see what happens throughout the rest of 2024. And obviously later this year, we will see an election in the USA. And that might mean that Joe Biden gets in for another term or potentially we could see Donald Trump taking over and that could make the situation a whole lot more interesting. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.